Hello everyone and today we will see about Montreal protocol. <coughs> so this Montreal protocol is the first protocol to protect ozone layer against harmful ozone depleting substance. Okay. So this is the first protocol and this question has been asked in GPSC state tax inspector exam. Okay, this thing which one is the first protocol? Okay. So what is ozone layer? Ozone layer is a a thin layer of ozone gas that is in upper stratosphere, stratosphere in our atmosphere it is present in atmospheres upper stratosphere layer okay there are different layers of atmosphere and in that particularly stratosphere okay and uh, the ozone layer it is very thin layer and it protects us from harmful uv rays of sunlight okay so what happens uh, if the ozone layer is depleted so here you can see an image like uh, this this is the ozone layer and the, here it is broken and so direct ultraviolet rays are coming on the earth and here the ozone layer where it is present it do not come on the earth surface it directly reflected back okay so if uh, this ozone layer is depleted or broken out then uv rays directly reach on the earth surface and cause a skin cancer cataracts and weaken immune system okay and this is on humans okay and this also damage a terrestrial plant life like a uh, plant growth if you see the plant growth is some affected and uh, aquatic ecosystem also affected due to this because uh, due to ozone layer depression uv rays uh, come and what there's a uh, sea water or on the whatever water system is get heated up so life become much more difficult in ocean or any aquatic system so these are the some uh, harmful effects so we need to uh, protect our ozone layer so we know that depletion of ozone layer causes this result so now uh, we have to find which substance causes this uh, ozone layer depletion and this is the image uh, 1979 and 2008 image here this is a slightly here that is here you can see here in blue image that is a depletion and 2008 the large hole okay so this is very dangerous so which are the substance so the chemicals which contain chlorine and bromine atom they have they are known as ozone depleting substance and they have long atmospheric life it means what if they are uh, once they enter in the atmosphere and so they do not uh, just uh, uh, diminish in a very few hours or few days they will remain many years of years in atmosphere uh, though i hope you have studied about polar stratospheric cloud pscs okay polar stratospheric cloud in that uh, polar region the stratospheric clouds are formed and uh, as the rain start so this chlorine atom breaks this layer of ozone and clo minus this chemical form is formed and ozone layer is broke down okay so now we know that chlorine and bromine the atoms okay so substance which contain chlorine and bromine chlorofluorocarbon halogens methyl chloroform carbon tetrachloride okay methyl bromide bromomethyl chloro bromochloromethane and hydrofluorocarbon hydrochlorofluorocarbon sorry so these are the substances so now what we see what you have seen up to now that is ozone layer is depleted yes and what are the harmful effects and which substances are causing now where we are using these substances so generally in refrigerators and air conditioning the gas or you can say that refrigerant so this is the main source of oz the ozone depleting substance fire extinguisher and pesticide and the cleaning agent that form based cleaning agent that we are cleaning nowadays that is also okay and uh, the insulations that in the not insulation directly but the process by which the insulations are made generally they are also contributing in this okay so what montreal protocol say so as per the montreal protocol we have to phase out all this substance not just single day like uh, uh, today uh, 
protocol is passed and from tomorrow uh, phased out all the products that we are using now it is subsequently step by step first we will identify what are the substances then we will stop or first decrease the production and then stop the production okay then what are the measure i will tell you in next upcoming slide so this treaty is signed in 1987 but if come in effect from 1989 but as we know in our constitution also the in our in parliament there are uh, amendments okay they as per our requirement we are amending our constitution okay so as day by day we come to know about more ozone depleting substance for example uh, let me tell you example of uh, our constitution so there are provision of fines or any law that we have to make okay so we are amending when we are amending when we come to know about that problem okay so as we uh, come to know about more and more substance so that we have to add in the list and if there is any new major steps then we have to also add it so there will be some different meetings so this is the seven times seven revisions are made and this summit is happened at different different places in 1990 london 1991 nairobi 1992 copenhagen 1993 bangalore sorry not bangalore bangkok sorry my mistake then vienna and then again montreal and then beijing so now uh, as per the montreal protocol if we strictly follow the norms that uh, we have to stop the production and stop the uses and find out the alternative and green re refrigerants so whatever the hole that we have made i have shown earlier here so we can recover fully fill again refill that gap by 2050 okay so these are the uh, main outcomes main advantages of now till now 191 countries if i'm not wrong i think if this data is changed i think 197 or 195 countries have signed it and they are following this so what are this uh, phasing out as i told you earlier that i will i will show the in next slide so these are the what is the phase out phase out means first production control that means if uh, a country or globally the harmful chlorofluorocarbon is produced so we have to first reduce the uh, production and then gradually we will stop the production then consumption control if the demand if the supply is zero then demand will be uh, high but if we give them alternative like uh, r12 we are using we were using in our uh, domestic refrigerator but drastically not drastically but gradually we have reduce uh, its production and then ultimately we have stopped the production and we have found alternative of r134a in refrigerator okay so if you do not provide r12 refrigerant then they will not consume so gradually we have to reduce the consumption okay we are we cannot say that whatever uh, new uh, equipment that you have purchased that is 5 year back now you have to change but whenever its life cycle become over then you you have to change the equipment but at that time a new technology product that we have to produce that you have to purchase so that is the consumption control third is trade import and export and reimport control that means in a particular country country the chlorofluorocarbon is man manufactured but it is exported to some other countries because not every country is producing refrigerants and all other things some are imported and some are exported okay so we have to control on productions also like for example in country x we have stopped the production or we have reduced the production but in country y there is no restriction so that so this country can for profit so not country or any manufacturing unit so for making a profit they can sell it to y country as an import okay so this we have to also control because one is uh, phasing out the substance but other country is not phasing out then there is a no meaning so we have to so in this uh, protocol the trade control is also uh, mentioned then adoption of ozone friendly technology like we use the substance which can which will not contain the chlorine and bromine atom okay so the example is we have shifted from r22 to r134 air refrigerator refrigerator okay r134 a based refrigerator this is a eco friendly refrigerator we can say that 
okay so this will not because this r134 a is not containing any chlorine or bromine atom so this will not be in harmful for ozone depleting substance okay so this is the adoption of eco-friendly technology example so worldwide there are many research and development are continuous to phase out this ozone depleting substance and next is training and capacity building let me give you this example again what is this training and capacity building uh you, you can say that a operator or worker okay a technician who is trained for r12 for example a technician is using uh, doing service of air conditioner or the maintenance of air conditioner so he used the tools and technologies and whatever the training he taught for r12 refrigerator okay but now r134 a is changed and this is a we know this is azeotropic refrigerator okay those who are from mechanical background they know very well azeotropic refrigerant so the charging gas the charging um, the pump that is the different for this the charging methodology is different for this so we have to give the training to this technician again so that uh, he can use this technology otherwise we will we will not use this uh, refrigerant very for eco-friendly manner and capacity building means what for example for r12 refrigerant we use the 5 mm diameter charging pipe okay but in r134a you may require 4 mm or 6 mm so we need to produce the charging light as per this okay so we have to change the system so that is known as capacity building or uh, there is a for example if i will give, will give then for old refrigerant the charging mechanism is somewhat different and r134a the charging mechanism is different okay so we have to shift the new station it's like a, uh, we are talking about electric vehicle but for electric vehicle we need also need to create our charging stations also so that is known as capacity building so this is the same thing okay in a refrigerant and other ozone depleting substance so these are the phase out uh, what is the phase out meaning in montreal protocol so these are the steps in montreal protocol that they have taken now what the uh, effect so the what are the developed country so they have phased out in 1996 1994 and 2005 subsequently but in developing countries they take time okay yes it is obvious now if we talk about in india's context so we have phased out chlorofluorocarbon in 2010 halons also hydrobromocarbons and but hcfc's hydrochlorofluorocarbon it is r22 refrigerant okay we are expected to phase out in 2014 okay so these are the uh, measures taken by the India in context of Montreal Protocol. Okay. Hope you are cleared and understand what is this. And one is monitoring. If you have implemented any protocol or any law or any convention, then whether it is uh, implemented uh, very well at ground level, so there is one monitoring also. So in this uh in this montreal protocol there is a one uh, provision for monitoring also that we need to continuously monitor on a uh, trading uh, whether it is illegal or illegal trading or production so there is monitoring mechanism also so what are the results whether it is success or fail so this is a one successful protocol okay so it, here it is a graph so if the montreal protocol not signed so then this uh, chlorine content in atmosphere this will be rise like this but after this it is slow down gradually and phased out as the year increase okay so and due to this our first impact what we can say that our first positive impact on our environment became in 2006 that there is a partial recovery in ozone layer okay so this is our uh, sorry not 2006 sorry it is in 2015 sorry it's my mistake so in 2015 there is a partial recovery in ozone hole 
okay so this is our first positive impact of humans on environment so this is the main benefit of this and due to this uh, covid 19 lockdown worldwide so in 2020 there is also partial recovery observed in ozone layer so these are the some good benefit and here it is a graph showing that different halogen hydrofluorocarbon and carbon tetrachloride all these uh, elements in that environment so this is the continuously increases but after 1991 or 1995 so these are continuously phased down and this graph show if there is if there will be no protocol then this layer will go up and up and the ozone layer is completely damaged okay but as per protocol we are coming down at 2021 here so we have obviously reduced our chlorofluorocarbon and other ozone depleting substance in our environment but we need to be very careful in upcoming future also we have to continue develop new technology that is eco friendly technology eco refrigerants and okay so these are the montreal protocol thing that is control or phased out ozone depleting substance and to protect ozone layer so main aim of pontel protocol is this hope you understand this thank you for watching this video and if you have any doubt just ask in the comment section i will solve your query and uh, subscribe this channel for upcoming videos on protocols and as i have been told you earlier uh, one video one protocol okay so we will follow this policy so subscribe this and like this video if you like and share with your friends so they will also get benefited thank you